Hello, my name is Elaine Evans. I'm an extension educator at the University of Minnesota, and I am sharing information with you on the Backyard Bumblebee Count, which is a project that originated with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. And I am giving some support here from the University of Minnesota Extension to help people figure out how they can participate. I want to quickly talk about why we are focusing on bumblebees. One out of three species of bumblebees are in decline. The once common rusty patch bumblebee is now facing extinction. There's a few different things that you can do to help. You can plant more flowers. You can keep those flowers and other habitats free of pesticides. You can take climate action and you can also collect data. Today, we're focusing on something you can do on the collect data end of things. Rare pollinators, as you can imagine, are hard to find. The more people that we have looking, the better chances we have of finding them. With this project, we're also documenting the time that you spend looking, and that helps inform us about abundances of these bees. The backyard bumblebee count is happening this year from July 24th to August 2nd. These dates were chosen as the time when colonies are typically at their peaks and you'll be more likely to find some of these rare bees. There are two different ways you can participate. One has a few more steps. The first one is simply taking photos of bumblebees and sharing them on iNaturalist. So iNaturalist, you can join either through their web platform or they also have an app before you start taking pictures of bees, you can learn a bit more about how to take pictures of bees that work for this project. So it's not just about photos that look pretty, it's about photos that will help us to identify these bees. It's important to get close up. You can use the macro setting on your, on your cameras. It's important to show some different angles. So for species identification, we sometimes need to see a direct front view of the face. Also helps to see the side of the bee and the back. So really showing multiple angles. One way to get those multiple angles is to take a video and then isolate stills from that video. More details on these photo tips can be found at bumblebeewatch.org, which is another great project for helping share data about bumblebees. So I encourage you to participate in Bumblebee Watch also. I mentioned the photos don't need to look good. Here are a couple photos I took that are pretty awful looking, but they're enough to show the ID character I need to see that this is a brown belted bumblebee. And um, so we do have some resources I'll share later on in this talk to help you get some of those bumblebee ID skills to know what you really need to show in your photos. In iNaturalist, you can just go in in the app and take a photo. It will automatically fill in the time and location. If you're doing this on a camera, and uploading on the website, you'll just need to enter those things in manually. So we do have this option to do more, and the difference here is that you'll keep track of the time that you spend looking, and you'll also note counts when you see the same bee species and sex of bee on a particular flower. So for example, if you see five, two spotted males on bee balm, you only need to take a photo of one of them and just record that information about the rest of them. So for this, we highly encourage you to get some bumblebee ID skills. The first part is just figuring out whether something is a bumblebee or not. There are a lot of things that can look like bumblebees. And also learn some ID for some of the common distinctive species. And lastly, figuring out if something is a male or female. We have the resource, more resources at this website here that we've compiled through the, the Minnesota Bee Atlas project. So we have some webinars, some slide sets, some flashcards, different things for you to, to, um, to gain new skills or to brush up if, you've, um, if it's been a year since you were looking at bumblebees. You will need to join the Project Backyard Bumblebee Count on iNaturalist. 
there are a few different options for how you actually do share your observations. You can take photos within iNaturalist on your phone as you go through your observation and upload each observation as you go along. You can take photos on your phone and then upload them to iNaturalist afterwards. Or if you're using a separate camera, you can take your photos and upload those to the iNaturalist website afterwards. I'm going to show you how to do one of these observations using a data sheet that we've created to help you keep track of your observations as you go along. To start, we're going to just walk around the yard a little bit to see what is blooming. And what I have with me is I have a camera to take pictures of bees and I have a data sheet that I'll be using to record data about what I find. Once I record the data, I will be sharing it on the Backyard Bumblebee Count project, which is on iNaturalist, and I'll be going over how we do that. So um, now I'm gonna walk around a little bit and just see what's blooming, see where the bees are so I can know uh, where it will be worth looking when we're, we're doing, doing our survey. So um, here in my, um, in my backyard, I've got some, some white clover blooming. That's something that bumblebees might like. I see some other bees. Um, uh, and up. If you're doing this at a park where it's a bigger area, you might just want to look ahead of time and kind of see which area, how much space you might want to cover and go around to see what plants are there. If you don't know all of the plants, iNaturalist is a great resource for that. You can take pictures of the flowers you don't know and share them on iNaturalist and have the community there help you identify them. Um, it can be a little bit tricky if they are horticultural varieties, but um, especially with native plants, it's a, it's a great resource. So you do want to kind of scope it out and um, know your plants because we're trying to record what plants we see the bumblebees on. And then, um, so we've got a good idea of what's going on here um, on the, the data sheet. I'm just going to note the start time so that we know when we're starting here. So I'm starting at 1.25 and today is June 24th. I'm doing this at my home, which I'll just look up the latitude and longitude later. Um, we also have information about the habitat type. So this is in a developed area in my yard in the middle of St. Paul. So um, what I will do then is just go ahead and start now. So I noted the time and I'm just gonna start looking for bees on flowers. And um, you can, can just make sure that you're really looking carefully and you can, can walk kind of slowly, keeping your eyes and ears out. looking for, for flowers where you're, you might see some bumblebees. <coughs> and even these, these places, these times when you don't find them, it's, it's good for us to have that information because it helps us understand um, the abundances of bumblebees and how they're doing instead of just, we saw this bumblebee here at this time. So that's why we're having this protocol instead of just um, just taking photos. So here's here's some other stuff blooming. I forgot there's some of the um, New Jersey tea.
Hi, I just wanted to redo a little section because in our full survey that we did, it was starting to rain at the end and um, we weren't seeing a ton of bees. So I just want you to see an example of what you do when you have multiple bees in a, in a patch where you're looking. So, um, so now the, the sun has come back out and, um, and I'm seeing multiple bees here. So um, I was looking at that one that just flew off and that was an impatience and so is this one. I've tried to get a picture of at least one um, representative from every species so that we can get an idea of what's going on. Um, and just in between these again, I'm just kind of taking a picture of my hand to um, make a dividing point. So um, for this one, I'm gonna say I have a photo in patience, but this time I saw two of them. So I'll do two hatch marks for now. Um, I saw pollen on both of them and they're on the, the spirea. Um, Let's see, so I am seeing another bee in here. It's another impatience, the, the common yellow, but I'm not that sure that it's not the one that was here that just flew back. So I'm not counting her. It is a little bit tricky to keep your eye on all of the bees and everything that's happening. So you just kind of have to, to take your best guess as to, to whether it's um, you're seeing new bees or not. And I'm just going to take a second here to see if there is anyone else on this patch now. And that's, that's it. So we'll, um, connect this in and um, hopefully this will give you an idea of, of um, what things are like at a busier patch as well. To summarize, you need to um, print some data sheets if you're going to be using them, grab your camera, scout out some flowers in your backyard or park wherever you're going, record your start time and photo bees and record them on the data sheet. The information that you're recording for these observations are your date, location, land cover, species of bees, number, um, number of bees that you're seeing, the sex of those bees in the plant. So a reminder here that we're looking for a photo of each combination of species, sex, and flower that you encounter during any one observation. And that observation is, you know, the 10 to 15 minutes, half hour, hour, however long you're spending um, at your, your site looking for bumblebees. For using iNaturalist to share those data, you if you're doing the photos as you go along, you will be an iNaturalist and you simply go take photo. If you are uploading your photos afterwards, you can go to choose image and then you'll add to project and select the backyard bumblebee count project. You can then um, fill in the date of observation, the count of how many individuals you observe. Um, if you're not confident in your Bumblebee ID, you can enter your count as one. You can then fill in the, the flower that you observed that be on um, or um, the, the total survey length in minutes. The, the sex of the bee and the land cover. Um, if you're keeping track on the data sheet, that's a nice way to keep that information handy. If you can keep that information in your, in your brain, um, you can do that too. Um, if you are doing these observations as you go along, you will need to pick your amount of time you're looking before you start. So the other options, if you're doing it afterwards, you can be kind of flexible and you can spend some, some more time or less time um, if it makes sense. But um, if you're doing it as you go along, you really need to decide beforehand. This is gonna be 10 minutes uh, because you need to enter that time even at the, the start of your observations with each one that you're, you're entering in. And we need to have the same time entered for each of those observations that are part of one count session. 
Next, I'm going to go over some more information about how to enter these into iNaturalist if you are doing this um, on their website. So I have iNaturalist open to the Backyard Bumblebee Count page. I'm going to click on Add Observation. And for the, the survey that we did, we just saw one bee. It was a brown belted bumblebee, and this was from um, June 24th. I'm going to hold off on um, entering where it is, but it was um, in St. Paul. And I am going to then um, get to the file. So I have some a place on my desktop where I've just stored my 2020 backyard bumblebee count photos, and I named them with uh, the observation and the date so I can find them easily and add them to the right observation. And you may be used to using iNaturalist, but maybe not with um, a project or not with a backyard bumblebee count project. So you'll next need to scroll down to fill out the project observation fields. So again, you put in, put in the date. Here you can put in the count, so you don't need to have photos of every single individual as long as you have a photo of each bee, um, bee species that you are identifying and um, on the different plants where you are as well because we want to record that, that plant information with them. So we saw our brown belted bumblebee on Spirea japonica. The total surveying time we had for this observation was eight minutes. It was a female and the land cover was developed. And then we just save the observation and we are done. If we had some, some additional species, we would be saving those and, um, and adding them, adding all that information for, for each of those observations. And um, that's basically how to do that. Here is a brief overview of the data sheet. So you can kind of see what's going on there. There's more information about those land covers. And um, you do need to just pick one. So you'll have to do your best guess what seems to be the majority of the, the habitat in the area that you are looking. There is a little cheat sheet here for some of the, the bumblebees for some ID hints. This isn't a substitute for training for species ID, but it's a good reminder if you can, can um, just need a refresh of, um, of what name is associated with some, some of the, the ID highlights for that bee. Here's an example of, of how we use the, the sheet to fill in data for these bees. And you can see um, like for, for bimaculatus on um, bee balm and artificialosa, we had um, both males and females, so those are separate lines, and we have photos for, for each of those. To summarize, if you're getting into this, the first things you're going to do are learn some bumblebee species ID, learn some bumblebee photography tips, sign up for iNaturalist, join the project, collect data, and enter those data at iNaturalist. There's lots of options for where you can do this, pretty much any place that you can find flowers with bees. So it can be in your backyard, a local park, pasture, roadside, any place where you have permission to go. It's great if we can get a lot of different types of habitats, prairies, woods, wetlands, so that we can learn more about bumblebee abundances related to these different kinds of habitats. For when to do it, we're looking for you to do this anytime you can, as often as you want, between July 24th and August 2nd. It's nice if the observation can be 15 minutes as at a minimum, but there's some places where maybe it only makes sense to, to do it for 10 minutes. It can be longer. I've done some of these where I spend, um, spend an hour at a site that really has a lot of flowers. You can also just do the option of taking photos of single bees that you see and, and sharing those. If you can't ID a bumblebee species, don't worry about it. This is a challenging skill to gain. Just take multiple photos of every bumblebee that you see.
and an iNaturalist, the community there will help to identify those bumblebees. If you have more questions, feel free to email me. Here's my email. You can also contact Jill at the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, or you can probably find answers to many of your questions on the website Backyard Bumblebee Count, which is a Wix site. There's the, the URL there for you to, to jot down. And with that, I'll let you get to it. I hope that you have fun out there looking for the bees, and I'm excited to see what you have to share with us.